What up, Internet? Kurt here, geeking out on cell phones in movies and TV. This has been an obsession of mine for a while, from where they started to where they're going and what they're like today. My fave early appearance of a cell phone, other than the Charlie Chaplin hoax, is the shoe phone in Get Smart. Watch out. Remember when Andy Dick was on a version of it in like the 90s? Okay, the shoe phone's ridiculous. Chaos, eh? But it's pretty much equal in size to pop culture's favorite giant phone, and that's the Zach Morris phone. You can use your cellular phone to order me a pizza. Also, the Dad Morris phone. He had one, too. Is this the only way I can get through to you? Man, that thing was nuts. It progressed over time and got a little bit smaller, <laughs> but not by much. Oh, I love when it reappeared on Fallon when Mark Paul Gossler came on as Zach Morris with the phone. That was awesome. It's Jesse. It was so awesome, in fact, that I swore then and there that I would watch every single episode of Raising the Bar, the show that Mark Paul Gossler was promoting at the time. <laughs> yeah, that didn't happen. Oh, and speaking of Fallon, he was in the SNL sketch with Will Ferrell on that super tiny cell phone. <laughs> Hello. That was great. Oh, and then they did it again, and Will Ferrell went back to having a Zach Morris phone. Hello. Full circle. All right, cell phones. It's up for debate whether they help or hurt hurt movies today. On one hand, movies like 16 Candles probably couldn't exist if there was a cell phone involved because Jake Ryan would have gotten through and the two of them would be in front of those candles about halfway through the movie. Oh, and the horror genre <laughs> is forever working against the cell phone because they always have to justify why people can't use them to get help. No one can get a signal up here. And it's always the same reason. Great, no reception. Ah, I can't get any bars. No bar. But then there's shows like 24 that could not exist without a cell phone. That's right. And now with the advent of text messaging, we have one of my favorite pastimes, and that's for spotting fake on-screen graphics for the phones. The biggest offender is and always will be Dexter. Seven seasons now, and they've always used the same thing. Bright blue background and big ass white font. It's so annoying, and it's huge too. Like the font is giant. That's why I love a show like Up All Night. Those are the actual graphics of the phone. Like that's what it really looks like. Mini Project's also pretty good, although sometimes I think they fake it to look like the real thing, maybe for a glare off the camera. I don't know. It's also fun to see phones of the future. Like in Iron Man 2, Tony Stark's phone is like a glass plate that you can like see through. Time for a little transparency. The best futuristic phone though goes to Tomorrow Never Dies and James Bond. Okay, it is hilarious because that phone could drive a Beamer. A Beamer, which by the way, could do all this fancy stuff, but couldn't manage a bulletproof glass. But then again, maybe that was on purpose, so the bazooka would have a clear path. Right, that's gonna do it. Stick around for more episodes. So what's happening this weekend? Hey, you're what's happening, baby. 